Our story today is called Anansi and the Box of Stories. Anansi takes a challenge. Long ago, the first spider, Kwaku Anansi, lived in Africa. He swung on his webs from tree to tree or ran on his thin legs along the ground. In that distant time, no one told stories on earth. Why? No one had any to tell. The sky god, Niami, kept them all to himself up in his sky kingdom. The stories told of happiness and sadness and the mysteries of the world. Many creatures asked Niami to share the stories, but the sky god refused. Anansi was curious about the stories too, so he went to see Niami. The sky god waved him away. You're only a spidery old man. How will you ever pay for my stories? Anansi knew better than to argue with the sky god. I only wish to know the price, he said. I don't yet know if I can pay it. Niami laughed again. Very well, I'll trade my stories for four fierce animals. First is the python, Onini, the snake that swallows people up. Second is Moboro, the hornets that buzz and sting. Third is Osebo, the leopard whose teeth are as sharp as knives. And fourth is the fairy, Motia, who stays unseen as the wind. That is a high price, said Anansi. Such stories must be wonderful indeed. And then he bowed and returned to earth. When Anansi got home, he told his wife, Aso, what Niami had said. I am no match for these creatures in strength or speed, Anansi said. How can I capture Onini? If I make a mistake, he will surely swallow me. A python's strength lies in his body, not his brain, said Aso. You must outsmart him from the start. She paused. To do this, you'll need a palm branch and some long vines. And then she explained the rest of the plan. Anansi took the branch and the vines to the stream near where Onini lived. Onini is a great python, Anansi said loudly. I'm sure he is longer than this branch. Onini listened from the leafy shadows and Anansi's words confused him. So he slithered out onto the path. What's that you were saying, spider? The python asked. I was talking about you, Anansi said. You see this branch? My wife, Aso, said that it was longer than you are. I told her she was wrong. This branch could not be longer than the greatest snake in the world, but my wife is very stubborn. She said I should come see you and find out once and for all. Put the branch next to me, said Onini. I will stretch out to my full length. Then we will see who is telling the truth. Anansi put down the palm branch and Onini leaned against it. Well, Onini asked. Patience, said Anansi. I must measure carefully. As he talked, he bound the python to the branch with the long vines over and over. He wound them around. So what have you learned? Onini asked at last. Good news, said Anansi. I was right. You are a little longer. Onini was as pleased as the greatest snake in the world could be. So now you can release me, he said. I wish that I could, said Anansi, but there's also bad news. I must take you to Naomi. So Anansi spun a web around Onini and carried him back to the sky god. If Naomi was surprised to see Onini, he hid it well. I will take the python, he said to Anansi, but you are not done yet. Mumboro the hornets. Anansi returned home to share the news with Aso. All is well, she said, and yet your face is long. What can I do about Mumboro? Anansi asked his wife. I cannot wrap them in vines. Aso nodded. Hornets that buzz and sting will slip through even nimble fingers, but hornets are nervous and quick to worry. First, you must fill an empty gourd with water. Anansi understood. After he filled the gourd, he went walking through the forest. Bzzz. Anansi heard Maboro buzzing overhead. He climbed up a tree above him, then he sprinkled some water from the gourd onto their nest. The hornets buzzed louder. The rain is coming, the rain is coming. We will all get terribly wet. Anansi cut a large leaf from the tree and held it over his head. Then he took the rest of the water and poured it over the leaf. The rain is falling, Anansi shouted as the water dripped around him. We know, cried Mabaro, but what can we do? You are lucky I am here, said Anansi. If you come inside my gourd, the rain will not reach you. The hornets did not hesitate. They flew right into the gourd. And when they were all inside, Anansi plugged up the gourd and spun a web around it. You'll be very safe from the rain now, he said. Then he returned again to Naomi and the sky kingdom in the clouds. The sky god took Moboro as he had Onini. 
I will take the hornets, he said, but you are not done yet. Osebo the leopard. Again, Anansi returned home. What can I do about Osebo, he asked his wife. I cannot wrap him in vines or catch him in a gourd and his teeth are as sharp as knives. It would be safe to keep him at a safe distance, said Aso. You must start with a large hole. Hmm. Anansi nodded. He knew what his wife meant, as he had dug such holes before. Anansi returned to the jungle and found Osebo's tracks where, and there he dug a deep hole. Then he covered up the hole with leaves so it was hard to see. The next morning, Anansi returned to the hole. Osebo was prowling around the bottom. What has happened here? Anansi asked. Osebo growled at him, showing teeth like knives. What do you think? I did not see this hole in the darkness and I fell in. How unlucky, said Anansi. This should be a lesson to you not to wander around in the dark. I do not care about lessons now, said Osebo. I care about getting out. Whoever dug this hole will return soon to take me away. Hmm, perhaps I can help, said Anansi. I see some long sticks here. If I lower them down, maybe you can climb up on them. Hurry, said Osebo. We may not have much time. So Anansi put down the sticks. Osebo placed his paws on them. The sticks are wobbly, he complained. I'm doing the best I can, said Anansi. You must stay low and hold on tight. Osebo crept up the sticks, keeping his head down. But when he was almost out, Anansi hit him over the head with a club. Osebo groaned. Quickly, Anansi spun his strongest web string around the leopard and the sticks. What are you doing, Osebo roared. This is no escape. True enough, Anansi admitted, for I must take you to Naomi. Anansi returned to the sky god. Naomi was not surprised to see him. I'll take the leopard, he said, but you are not done yet. Motia the fairy. Anansi was happy he had captured three of Naomi's creatures, but how would he ever capture Moesha? How do I find a fairy who is invisible? He asked Aso. You cannot find her, Aso said. You must make her find you. Anansi started by carving a wooden doll. When he finished, the doll looked almost real. Anansi covered it with sticky gum from a plant. Anansi took the doll to the odum tree where he knew the fairies played. He then pounded some yams in a bowl until they became a tasty paste. He put the bowl in the doll's lap. And then Anansi tied a vine to the doll's neck and went off to hide in the bushes. Before long, Mo Moesha came by. She saw the doll sitting alone under the odum tree. She also noticed the pounded yams. May I have some of your food? She asked hungrily. Anansi pulled on the vine he had tied to the doll's neck. The doll nodded. Moesha started eating and eating. Soon the bowl was empty. She wiped her mouth and stood up. Thank you, she said to the doll. The doll said nothing. I said, thank you, Moesha said again. The doll remained silent. Where are your manners? Asked Moesha. I have thanked you twice and you will not answer. This is no way to behave. You need to be taught a lesson. Moesha grabbed the doll's shoulder. She tried to pull her hand away, but it was held tight. She grabbed the doll with her other hand. Splat. Now Moesha was really mad. She kicked the doll with one foot and then the other. Both were then stuck as well. Nancy stepped out from the bushes. What have we here, he asked. Moesha vanished at once, but that did no good. Visible or not, her hands and feet were still stuck tight to the doll. So Nancy spun a web around Moesha and brought her up to Naomi. When the god, sky god saw them, he called together everyone in the kingdom. Hear me, he told them. Anansi has met my price. My stories are now his to do with as he pleases. When Anansi got home, he shared the stories with Aso. They laughed and cried and even shouted in surprise at the endings, but they did not keep the stories to themselves. They told them to others and still do to this day. And that is the end of the story.